Greetings to those who watch below. Before we start on today's video of 5 creepy paranormal tales, I'd like to remind you all that I have currently entered the Evil Idol competition run by Chilling Tales for Dark Nights. In fact, my first round entry is up today. Voting is available for on the video for one week. So please, go check out my reading, and if you like it, give it a thumbs up, as this will help me to get through to the next round. Without further ado, let's dust off some paranormal tales from the vault. It called to me, and I answered. When I was 14, I was sharing the basement recreation area with my stepbrother. My parents had spent time building me a room in the basement at my request, but lo and behold, I slept most of the time in the playroom, or whatever you want to call it. I didn't start sleeping in my own room till I was about 16, and this instance confirms why I didn't. It was between 2 and 4 am. I don't recall the exact time, but I had originally fallen asleep on the floor next to the futon my stepbrother was sleeping on. He faced the wall and was heavily snoring. I had woken up and couldn't fall directly back to sleep, so I tossed and turned while the ambience of the TV spread around the basement. Out of nowhere, I became completely stiff and unable to move my entire body but my head and neck. At this point, my feet were pointed to the wall and the TV was behind me. I started to look around because I had become immediately filled with anxiety and fear. I was thinking of this being sleep paralysis at the time, until the next step took place. I lay there in silence, heavy snoring from my left, and it felt as if someone sat down upon my body, holding me by the shoulders. I heard a very faint voice in the distance at first. Josh, are you there? I know you're there. Eyes peeled wide open, trying to diagnose me being crazy at this point. It then spoke again. Josh, can you hear me? I know you can hear me. Come to your bedroom. I continued to try and ignore it, as I felt I was about to puke. I was becoming really scared. In a much louder, gruffer voice, it spoke to me again. Josh, I know you can hear me. Come to your bedroom. As if the weight was lifted off my body, I was immediately able to move, and I sat up in a split second and rose to my feet. The voice continued to call my name and demand my presence in my room. Like any unoriginal horror movie, I was pleading with my brain not to do it but stupid old me decided to make my way to the bedroom. The door always remained shut at night, and as I put my hand on the doorknob, I heard it one more time. Josh, are you coming? Open the door. As I opened the door, I had a small basement window parallel to the doorway. As I slowly creaked it open in a cold sweat, there was what appeared to be dimly lit yellow eyes in the window and the shape of some sort of dark figure staring deep into my soul. Wide-eyed and terrified, I looked up, and our eyes locked for about 30 seconds. The glow got brighter, and then began to dim. This repeated rhythmically. I broke contact and slammed the door immediately. I bolted to the other end of the basement for the light, and proceeded to rock back and forth because there was no explanation for what I just witnessed. My stepbrother woke up in a panic, and I was petrified. We went back into the room together, and turned the light on, but nothing was there. We checked outside, and nothing else could be found in the vicinity. My brother stayed with me for a bit, until I fell back to sleep. Nothing like this occurred again. I can't say what it was, or why it was there but it left the biggest impact on me that I still feel to this day. I know the difference between dreaming and being in an altered state of mind, 
and this was one of the most real experiences I have ever felt. To this day, that voice still makes my body tingle, and the hair on my arms raise up every time I think about it. Man in the Hallway This happened to me about a week ago. I'm not sure what to even make of this, and it's the most bizarre thing that's ever happened to me. Basically, it started off that me and my boyfriend, who lives in a flat, were home alone. We were chilling in his room watching football, and then I got up to go to the toilet quickly. Once I finished, I turned out the light first, and then opened the door. And instantly, I just knew my boyfriend was around the corner waiting to make me jump, as he always does this. He'd always catch me off guard, but for the first time ever, I had a sense of fear, like I knew he was there. So my first thought was to get him back. Bearing this in mind, this was all in the split second it took me to turn off the light and open the door, so my eyes had not adjusted to the dark at all. I open the door and immediately stop and say, yeah, nice try, I can actually feel you're here. At the same time, my eyes adjusted to see that to the left of me, about five foot away, is a clear silhouette of a six to six foot two tall man, which was a shock to me, because in the pitch black hallway, he stood out like a sore thumb, so the figure would have been much darker than the pitch black itself. Plus, my boyfriend's around five foot nine, so I was obviously shocked. As this was happening, I hear this high-pitched buzzing noise and feel like there's a static heaviness in the hallway. Then, at the same time from my boyfriend's bedroom, I hear him shout as a team score and I slowly walk in the opposite direction of this man, praying that this is all just a figment of my imagination. I looked back only once as I got to the door and there was nothing there at all. My boyfriend's hallway is about 15 foot long, and the whole place is quite creaky, so it's impossible to move silently around the flat because of all the floors and doors. This figure definitely wasn't a living human being, which would have actually been scarier as we were home alone. I go back to our room and mention to my boyfriend, but he's watching football, so it all sort of goes unspoken, and I sit there for ages wondering what on earth just happened. Later that night, we were laying in bed drifting off to sleep, when I feel a freezing cold breeze, like when you have a gap in the cover and all the cold air gets in, but it won't go away. It was all over me. It was awful, and I had major goosebumps, but I just cuddled up to my boyfriend and went back off to sleep. Then, I was awoken suddenly at about half five in the morning, feeling really, really sick. So I ran to the toilet, but nothing came up. I sat on the floor for five minutes, then went back to my boyfriend's room. Not even a minute later, my boyfriend suddenly got up, ran to the toilet, and threw up for about ten minutes straight. I suddenly remembered the events of the previous night, and got really freaked out at how strange everything had seemed. That day, everything was normal, apart from that the television kept changing to this boxing channel non-stop for five minutes. Every time we'd change it back to what we were watching, and it would change back to this fucking boxing channel. It was the most annoying thing. So I said half-heartedly, Okay, that's enough Mr. Ghost. You can stop now. And it actually stopped. My boyfriend and I laughed, and we put it down to a coincidence and nothing else weird happened that day. The day after, I went to stay at my dad's, and while I was on the phone to my boyfriend in the evening, I mentioned to him all the strange things that had happened, and asked what he thought of it. He said it was weird, but that I was just overthinking it. And then added, I'm not having no fucking ghost in this house. If there is one here, tell it... Then he stopped, and said Charlotte, I've just come over really cold. You could tell he was being deadly serious. 
so with me being a firm believer in the paranormal, I told him that he'd probably offended the spirit, and that you can't go messing around with things like that. So, he said out loud to his empty room, Sorry, please, can you leave? And then started freaking out, saying how his shadow had just come across from his side of the bed, across the wall, in front of his TV, got to the door, and vanished. My Hissing Friend It all happened about 18 years ago. I was a junior in high school, and during this point in my life, I was frequently experiencing strange occurrences. Shadows caught in the corner of my eye, the feeling of being watched, voices that seemed to be whispering in a strange language, like an invisible swarm of bees flying around my head trying to speak to me. However, nothing compares to what occurred on this night. My bedroom had a bunk bed that ran along the east wall when you walked in. I had a single window that sat on the opposite wall directly across from me, and I typically slept on the top bunk on my side, facing the window. For some reason I was awoken suddenly out of a deep sleep, and immediately succumbed to a feeling of being watched. As I adjusted from deep sleep to awakening, I noticed a shadow standing in the middle of my room. I knew immediately that it was not cast from anything in the room, because the shadow was standing in the middle of the only light that peered in through the window from the full moon that stood outside. The black shadow staring right at me began to let out a growl, as it stood there that still gives me creeps to this day. Before my still adjusting senses could make out what was going on, it changed its gruesome growl to a high-pitched, seething hiss. As it made this hissing sound, it raised its arms up, and what I can only describe as claw-like fingers grew longer and longer until they reached across and pushed down through my body. The feeling was unlike anything I could have ever experienced before, and every part of my body that it was ripping through felt like a dead, cold burn that registered absolute hopelessness and lifelessness, a horrible and unequal feeling. Again, the shadow let out the unforgettable hiss while it lifted its arms again, reaching out and clawing through me again and again and again. As it repeated this, I felt the hopelessness and lifelessness over and over tearing through what I could only say was literally my soul. My family is very religious, and I was two at the time, and knew I had to do something to get rid of this evil presence. So, with what felt like all my might, I slowly raised my left hand and said, with the power of Lord Jesus Christ, I command you to be gone, and pushed at it. Not with my muscle force, I felt like I was using an energy from within. During this instant, the shadow was letting down one more rip, but my efforts actually physically pushed the shadow slowly back. Its seething hiss changes to a <sighs> sound, and it flew back and away in slow motion. But the shadow wasn't done. It still stretched its claws out one last time to rip through me as it slowly flew back. I distinctly remember one of its fingers edged near my neck and curl around my medallion chain that I had on, as if hanging off the edge of a cliff. On the chain hung a crucifix, and I never took it off. The shadow was still slowly... The shadow was still slowly fading back, the one claw curled around the chain, allowing it to continue to hang on, until I heard a snap. I will never forget feeling the chain unravel around my neck and slide off. The chain, along with the crucifix, fell off the side of my bunk bed and onto the ground. The shadow faded even more, while still reaching out to me with both arms, until it disappeared. Before everything could register in my head, I remember being so exhausted and drained from what just happened, that I literally hit the pillow and passed out back into a deep sleep. The next thing I know, I'm waking up. It's morning, 
and I begin thinking about what had just happened. I remember thinking, wow, that was a crazy dream. It felt so real, as if I was awake. It had to be a dream, because I still had my crucifix on, and I reached for it on my chest. The crucifix is gone, and my heart begins to pound. I look over the edge of the bunk bed to see if it was in the spot I remember it falling to during the night, and sure enough, it was there, on the floor, rolled up and broken exactly as I remember it. As the reflection of the cross and broken chain shined back towards me, my heart was now pounding out of my chest, because it was clear physical evidence to me. What I had experienced the night before was not a dream at all. Tarot Cards I played with tarot cards without knowing the consequences. Well, to be fair, I was never told of the consequences and responsibilities of using one. I always thought they were bogus, or a gimmick for a paranormal enthusiast to joke with. Let's just say that this experience changed my view on them. I was back in high school when this happened. That would make me around 16 to 18 years old. The age when adolescent kids turn into irresponsible and pretentious young adults. I knew my father enjoyed supernatural and violent TV shows. So, I decided to get him a tarot card set from the local toy shop. Both him and I were avid fans of the TV show Supernatural, and I decided that this gift would suit him well. So, one evening, I sat down with him as he unboxed the tarot card set, still fresh and clean. He thanked me, then laughed, saying that he already had a set. I must add that my father is from the north of England, and his late mother, my paternal grandmother, was a spirit medium and paranormal enthusiast during her life, which meant that she had a basic knowledge on such tools. My father decided to put the new set aside, and brought out his mother's worn out deck. It was eerie, I must say, as the deck was tattered and faded, and to my surprise, my dad knew how to use the cards, and showed me how to read them. Let's be honest, I couldn't memorise all 78 cards, normal and reversed. My dad told me to keep the old deck if ever I wanted to try it out, which was probably a mistake that we both should have seen. I took his offer and kept the deck on my nightstand for the evening, thinking that it was whatever, and went on with my activities. Right before bed, I decided to check out the old deck, letting my mind float, as it was the only memorabilia of my late paternal grandmother. Curious, I started to lay out the cards in the fashion my father did, in an attempt to read my own predictions. Big mistake. I'll be honest, I don't even remember what cards I pulled, but I felt a dark presence rush over me. It felt extremely thick and suffocating and I had to leave my bedroom. I decided it was just my mind playing tricks, so I went back in to sleep uncomfortably. That was only the beginning. For the following weeks, I was landed with bad news. From my pet rabbit and newborn kittens dying out of the blue, I dropped grades, had arguments with friends, and also had my parents argue to the point of divorce. My mind wanted to think of these as bad coincidences, but deep down, I knew I screwed up and brought something into the household. The last straw was when I was in the shower, I felt pressure on my neck, as if something was trying to crush my windpipe. It happened so fast, I couldn't even explain it when I mustered up the courage to talk to my father. He listened to me, and took the deck away, back to his own personal storage and all the coincidences began to die down. After our family moved to another house in 2013, we felt a massive burden lifted from our backs. All the negativity that was building up in each of us was left behind there, and it's better off that way. My Demonic Television I grew up in a very quiet, upper middle class suburban neighbourhood in a medium sized town in Connecticut. Gorgeous tree-lined streets with big homes on acres of woods. 
Nothing exciting, other than the occasional tree limb falling and causing a power outage ever happens here. I have no idea what the hell this was, and I still think about it to this day as being the weirdest and scariest thing that's ever happened to me. One night, a few summers ago, I was 17, and was supposed to be going to dinner with my family, but I wasn't feeling well, and there was a show on TV that I really wanted to watch, so I elected to stay home and just rest instead. My family was fine with it, and I relaxed on my couch with my dogs as I BSed around flipping channels, waiting for my show to start at 9. I had the remote next to me on the couch, and one of my big dogs, being the klutz he is, tried to jump on me, knocking the remote to the floor in the process. I picked up the remote, but somehow, even though it had only fallen like a foot from the couch onto soft carpeting, it was broken and wouldn't work at all. Annoyed, I got up to manually change the channel back to the network that my show would air on, on the cable box. As I started pressing the buttons on the cable box, the TV made an incredibly loud and weird sound that I can only describe as a whoosh, like a gust of wind, and it shut off. A little bit pissed at this point, I just moved to one of the other rooms in the house with a TV, but the same thing happened. I turned on a different TV, heard a loud whoosh, and it abruptly shut off. This happened to yet another TV in a different room. So I texted my friend, who lives a few houses down, to ask if her cable was being weird. She replied almost instantly that no, everything was fine. Beyond confused and worried about how I would explain breaking every single TV in my house to my parents, I finally sat down in the kitchen and decided I would watch on that tiny TV as a last resort. This time, it worked well for a few minutes and then all of a sudden, I heard the all too familiar whoosh, and it abruptly shut off. At this point, I was so annoyed that I just retreated to my room upstairs, relegating myself to avoiding spoilers and watching the show tomorrow when it would come out online. My room is in the top corner of the house, right under the main part of our attic, which we didn't use for much besides storage. I kept going back downstairs to check the TV, but still, none of them would turn on. When I got back to my room about 45 minutes later, inexplicably, I started hearing the same whoosh sound that the TVs had made, but this time, it was coming from the attic. I was beyond creeped out. There weren't even any old TVs up there and certainly none that were plugged in, capable of turning on and off. It also wasn't at all windy outside, and it was the exact same sound as what the TVs were making. I was both scared and annoyed. I had no idea what the fuck was going on. I wasn't feeling well again, and just wanted to go to sleep. I barged up into the attic to see what was making the sound and to make it shut up so that I could go to bed. Right in the attic, in the middle of the room, was a TV that I had never seen before in my life, turning on and off, making the whoosh. I freaked out, and was basically paralysed with fear and confusion as I watched this TV, which wasn't even plugged in, turn on and off. I booked it back to my bedroom, slammed the door, and had no idea what the hell to do about this demon TV in my attic that was haunting the rest of the TVs in my house. I called my parents, who thought I was tripping acid, and said that they'd be home eventually. But I could call the cable company if I wanted. The whoosh continued for a good hour, as I sat on my bed, crying convinced this is how I would die, death by demon TV. All of a sudden, it stopped, and I was even more freaked out than before. I decided I would go back into the attic to see what was up with this possessed TV. When I got up there, 
It was just sitting there, like your classic mid-90s huge CRT TV, not making a peep. I wanted to bring it down to show my parents, which in hindsight was a horrible idea, trying to release the evil into my house, but it was way too heavy and dusty for me to carry down the steps. I was just happy it had stopped and headed downstairs to try the other TVs again, but they still refused to turn on. My mum finally got home, and I practically threw her up the stairs into the attic to ask where the hell this TV came from. We got upstairs, and as you can probably guess, the thing was gone. Completely gone. And obviously, all of the TVs in my house, including the remote that I thought my dog had broken, were working fine. I tried to relay everything that happened to my mum, but she and the rest of my family after I told them understandably think I'm absolutely insane, and they had thrown out all of the 90s TVs. It never happened again, and I still have no idea what the fuck happened that night, but even now in college, I sometimes get freaked out watching TV alone at night. Hey guys, thank you ever so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit like and subscribe. Also, there's the little bell once you subscribe to the channel. If you click that, it will alert you when a new video comes out on the channel, which I am aiming to be every Tuesday. Additionally, in the description box of this video is a link to my Evil Idol entry. Please, please, please make sure you go and check that out, as a thumbs up on that video is one click closer to me being in the next round. If you have a story that you'd like to share, be it a creepypasta or a true life experience, make sure you get in touch with me. So until next time, sleep tight.